Hello guys, welcome to another video. This time I have here the Nikolai Ion G16 and the Ion G13. This is the illustrative model that I used, okay? Nikolai sent me the, the coordinates for the pivot, so the results are very accurate. First of all, we have to determine the instant center, okay? The magic point, also known as the virtual pivot. As you know, on horse link bikes, you need to, to see the, the pivots and then you make the crossing lines and the, the intersection point is the instant center. Now that you have this magic point, you can easily determine the anti-rise, okay, the braking behavior. And to do that, you just cross the line between the rear contact point and the instant center, okay? So this bike has an anti-rise of around 60% which is a normal value for an horse link bike. And this value means that the, the amount of rotation of the brake caliper around the disc is not much, okay? So you got here a very good balance uh, between uh, uh, geometry and uh, brake independency. This, this graph just represents all the anti-rise changes acro across the travel. And as you can see, the high-end G16 and G13 are very similar, okay? They use a, a similar layout for the suspension, so the results are very similar. Good. So, moving on to a more important parameter, the anti-squat, okay? The parameter which determines the pedaling efficiency of the bike. To, de to determine this, this value, uh, you already have the instant center, so now you cross the line between the axle and the instant center, which is the swing arm line. Okay, and we will see where this line crosses the chain line, okay? So as you can see, it crosses at that point here, and it crosses at that point for every, uh, for every cogs, okay? Independently of the cog that we are, you are using, the chain line will always cross the swing arm line at that position there, okay? So this means that the anti-squat of this bike will be uh, very close to 100% at the sag position, okay, independently of the rear cog, okay? So the bike is very well optimized for pedaling efficiency. And as you can see in this graph, which uh, represents the anti-squat values across the travel, you can see that at the sag position, okay, on the pedaling zone here, um, the anti-squats are, are around 100 100%, okay? And, and very good anti-squats independently of the, the cogs of the cassette. This, this graph is for the G16, but the G13 is very similar, okay? 100% anti-squats around that uh, for every rear cogs. Good, so both G13 and G16 are very good pedalers. As you might know, to have anti-squats, you need to have chain grow, okay? Unless you have a high pivot bike, on high pivot bikes you can have good anti-squats without having chain grow, but on traditional bikes with the low pivots, uh, you need to have this chain grow in order to have the chain pulling, okay? So basically the chain is pulling down the suspension, uh, eliminating the squats, okay, the bob caused by the horizontal acceleration of the rider. Okay, so the, the chain grow is basically the result uh, of this distance, okay, the bottom bracket uh, axle distance, and as you can see, this distance increases during the travel, okay, and in this case, the G16 has a 22 millimeters of chain grow, which is a, a good value for a bike that pedals uh, so well. And as you can see, both Ion G16 and G G13 have a very similar chain grow profile. Just a small note, uh, the, the more chain grow you have, the more pedal kickback you have, okay? Because since the chain is growing, it's pulling you, it's pulling back the pedals, okay? The pedals are rotating back because the chain is pulling back the, the, the pedals, okay? So chain grow is proportional to the, to the pedal kickback. To compare this with other bikes, 
I drawn this this graph which represents several bikes, okay? Represents the chain grow of several bikes, and the high end G16 is this one, the green line. And as you can see, we can separate these bikes in three groups: the bikes that have a very high chain grow, the bikes that have a normal optimized chain grow, and the bikes that have low chain grow. The bikes that have high chain grow. They are, they just have ice and grow because they have huge anti-squats, too much anti-squats, or because they are not well optimized, okay? These ones, the ones that have low chain grow, uh, this is just because they have low anti-squats, okay? So the pedaling efficiency is also low. This group here, where the high end, the high end G16 uh, is included, they have, um, normal values of chain grow, okay? The minimal values, of chain grow needed to have uh, such a good pedaling effici efficiency. So you can't you can't drop these values much more than than this, unless you are using an high pivot bike, as I said previously. Good. So moving on to leverage ratio. Okay, leverage ratio is basically the ratio between the travel at the wheel and the travel at the shock. Okay, and uh, the way that this ratio changes across the travel will determine the progressivity of the suspension. And in this case, the Nikolai have a very progressive suspension, as we are going to see right now. Okay, so this is the leverage ratio for the G13 at orange and the G16 at blue. And as you can see, uh, you have a continuously decreasing leverage ratio. And a very interesting uh, aspect is that um, since the suspension layout of both bikes are similar, uh, in this case, the more travel the bike has, the more progressive it will be. Okay, I'm simulating the high end G16 as a 150-50 millimeters bike, but you can increase the travel on this bike to 170. And if you do so, you will get more progressivity. By comparing the progressivity of several bikes, you can see that the Nikolais are quite progressive, okay, and they appear at the end of the table. The G13 has 45% of progressivity, and it's probably the most progressive 130mm bike in the market. So a progressive bike ju just means that you have a high leverage at the initial travel, okay, so very smooth, so very sensitive suspension, and at the same time, uh, you have a lower uh, leverage at the end of the travel, so you get the bottomless feeling, okay? So on big jumps and bigger impacts, the suspension will be very smooth at the end of the travel. You don't feel that ash impact at the end of the travels. In addition, the G16 is also very progressive, and if you use the G16 with the more travel version, uh, you will get uh, more like 10% of progressivity. So on both bikes, you won't need much uh, bottom out spacers or you, or you don't need much high speed compression to avoid the, those annoying harsh bottom outs. Okay. So the suspension will be uh, very good. Uh, to conclude, both high on G13 and 16 have a very good pedaling efficiency with anti scots around 100% and the chain grow and pedal kickback is very well optimized for such uh, good pedaling efficiency. Okay, so they are under normal levels. The braking is, is okay. There is a good balance between traction and geometry with anti-rises around 60%, a normal value for the horse link bike. And finally, the progressivity is quite substantial. Okay, these suspension are truly progressive um, without being too much. And uh, you will get, uh, as a consequence, a smooth initial travel and a good bottom-out resistance at the same time. Okay, so overall I would say that Nikolai knows what they are doing and they just made the two great bikes with a very well-optimized kinematics. Okay guys, so that's all for today. I hope you like this video for the Nikolai bikes. If you like it, please uh, give a like, subscribe and share with your friends. Okay, that's it. See you soon. Bye!